The recent scandal involving the Panama Papers involves a massive data leak of over 11 million otherwise confidential documents from a Panamanian law firm. There's been a lot in the headlines lately about this development because it has involved world leaders, financiers, and even celebrities from around the globe who have allegedly, some of them, been involved in international tax evasion schemes or even money laundering. Now, as intriguing as some of these revelations have been, they're really only part of an ongoing story. And that ongoing story has been a historic enforcement campaign by the U.S. government against international tax evasion. And not only has it been historic, but it's also been very effective. Over the years, it has led to the prosecution of large financial institutions, of bankers, of lawyers and other gatekeepers, and of U.S. taxpayers themselves who had accounts overseas but hadn't disclosed them to the government. If one has an offshore account that hasn't yet been disclosed, the Panama Papers tell us now, now is the time to act, to act like tens of thousands of other U.S. taxpayers have done by voluntarily disclosing those accounts to the U.S. government before the U.S. government becomes aware of them through other methods. You do this to minimize the financial consequences and to minimize the chances of prosecution. Now, one irony of this enforcement campaign, one irony of the fact that it's been so successful, is that it has led to some resentment from around the globe of the United States, to a, to a perception that the U.S. has unfairly or inappropriately flexed its regulatory and financial muscle on the uh, world financial stage. So it is, again, another irony from the Panama Papers that the scandal has put the spotlight on the U United States itself as a possible tax haven. Uh, although few U.S. citizens to date have been identified as having used the services of the Panamanian law firm, uh, the revelations have indicated that certain U.S. jurisdictions, certain states, have been used by foreigners to stash their cash here in the U.S., possibly some of them, in pursuit of a tax evasion scheme or money laundering scheme directed against their own foreign government. So these revelations have only intensified regulatory efforts that themselves have been a long time in coming. These efforts have been spearheaded by the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, or FinCEN, as well as the Internal Revenue Service, backed up, of course, by the Department of Justice. Long story short, these efforts have focused on making financial institutions identify the beneficial owner, that is, the real person who controls the money be behind these uh, financial transactions that are being conducted in the United States. Now, these new regulatory efforts are only going to enhance the requirements that already apply under traditional anti-money laundering and Bank Secrecy Act requirements. But the Panama Paper scandals in this entire situation reminds us of the basic problem posed by the criminal money laundering statutes themselves for both financial institutions and for professionals. And that is, if you're an institution, if you're a professional, what is the amount of due diligence that you have to perform to make sure that the money coming from your client is clean? Because if the money coming from your customer is not clean, then the problems of the customer can become problems of the institution or the professional.